shuts down, then Europe could be thrown into famine. Now, it wouldn't be as quickly as it happened in the movie. It would take probably years, maybe decades, but it would be, you know, probably the largest human migration in history uh, that would be the result of this, or mass die-off. I don't know, you know, one or the other. And now uh, Nature Communications last week just published an article titled, Warning of a Forthcoming Collapse of the Atlantic Meridional Overturning Circulation, the AMOC. Then there was the, 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 the Great Conveyor Belt, the Gulf Stream. Um, and they're saying that, you know, the, the IPCC said that this would, could happen in the 22nd century. In other words, you know, 70, 80 years from now. They're arguing or building a case, a scientific case, that it could happen as quickly as 2025, two years from now. Now, the other problem that that brings, or that was published by the National, the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, titled Evidence for Massive Methane Hydrate Destabilization During the Penultimate Interglacial Warming. And what they're looking at is that during this period of time, about 126,000 years ago, there was this sudden burst of methane in the atmosphere that was followed by a sudden burst of global warming that was you know, disruptive to life on the planet and, and, and changed sea levels you know, quite, quite significantly. This appears to be the result of the methane that is frozen in our oceans, bubbling, you know, warming up and turning back you know, from a solid back to a gas and floating up into the atmosphere. And you know, methane is 80 times more effective than or 70 some odd times more effective than CO2 as a greenhouse gas. Now, that process is referred to as the clathrate gun or the clathrate gun hypothesis, which is that, and in fact, Joe Biden is speaking right now at the White House saying we can no longer deny the impact of climate change. I mean, this is like, today is a perfect storm. 140 million Americans are under heat warning today. The clathrate gun hypothesis is that when the oceans warm to a certain threshold, these frozen sediments or these frozen, it's kind of like snow cone slurry, these frozen, and it's 1.4 trillion tons of methane, that these frozen slurries, you know, bubble up to the surface, they melt and go up to the surface and, and jack global warming. Um, it happened in a small way 125,000 years ago. Nobody's sure what provoked it. It might have been some kind of volcanic activity someplace, um, you know, motion in the continents, who knows. Um, but 250 million years ago, we know that, or we're pretty certain, that this is what caused the, the largest extinction in the history of Earth. It's called the Great Dying, or the, uh, the Permian Mass Extinction. And 70% uh, of all all life on land and 90% of all life in the oceans died during that period of time. And that was caused by these methane crystals warming up. So now in this, in this article that was published in the, uh, you know, in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, uh, they just come right out and say that if the, if the warming that is happening right now in the oceans causes the AMOC, the Great Conveyor Belt, to shut down. The shutting down of that Great Conveyor Belt speeds up the probability of the clathrate gun hypothesis. In fact, this is literally from their study. They say, quote, the key findings of our study add to a growing body of observational findings strongly supporting the clathrate gun hypothesis. Importantly, now keep in mind, everybody thought that it would take six or seven degrees Celsius of warming to trigger the clathrate gun. They go on to say, importantly, the interval we have studied is marked by a mean climate state comparable to future projections of transient global climate warming of 1.3 to 3 degrees Celsius. Well, we hit 1.3 degrees this year. July 4th was the hottest day in the history of the human race. And, you know, when the, the last time that CO2 levels were what they are right now. We're, we're at 422 parts per million right now of CO2. The last time they were at that level, there were trees growing in Antarctica. So we're not at a destination right now. We are on a journey. We are on a path. And it's a path that's it's not, not to a good place. 
Meanwhile, in the midst of all this, the Republicans who take money from the fossil fuel industry, who basically to a, to a man and woman are owned, bought and owned by the fossil fuel billionaires here in the United States, Republicans are trying to kneecap efforts by the Biden administration to do anything about this. They have put a, over a dozen anti-climate change um, amendments into these must-pass pieces of legislation, the annual budget, the military budget, the Department of Energy budget. You know, there's a bunch of these budgets that are passing through Congress right now, and they originate in the House of Representatives. Um, the ones in the House Appropriations Committee, is it, that committee is chaired by uh, Texas Republican uh, Representative Kay Granger, who has taken nearly $1.2 million from the oil and gas sector in her career. On her website, she brags that she has fought to prevent spending to come back climate change. A line in, uh, in her bill would bar the Biden administration from spending any money on, quote, climate change fisheries research. Uh, this act comes after tens of thousands of dead fish just washed ashore in Texas because the temperatures in the Gulf of Mexico are so high. The science funding also is, uh, bill also zeroes out funding for the U.S. Global Change Research Program at the National Science Foundation. It also defunds a separate Biden order to enhance the federal government's forest stewardship and promote, quote, climate smart stewardship of mature and old growth forests. Uh, the bill authorizing funding for the Department of the Interior, which oversees public lands, says, and I quote, none of the funds made available by this act may be used to consider or incorporate the social cost of carbon. It also permanently restricts $1.3 billion in grant funding under the Clear a Clean Air Act to mitigate the effects of air pollution. This at a time when a quarter of all Americans are living in an area where air pollution is uh, dangerous. It also pr includes provisions requiring the Secretary of Interior to conduct quarterly onshore uh, oil and gas lease sales, as well as uh, restart fossil fuel lease sales in the Gulf of Mexico. It bars the government from issuing leases for offshore wind development in Florida. This, uh, this legislation has been spearheaded by Mike. Mike Simpson, a Republican from Idaho, who received nearly $900,000 in campaign contributions from electric utilities and $440,000 from oil and gas industry donors. It's amazing how little money it 